As we know, as we focus on, mostly in this conference, nutrition-sensitive uh, interventions, policies and programs um, may have direct, uh, may have impacts that we can measure on nutrition. Um, but what about not nutrition-sensitive interventions? Interventions that are even, you know, not just nutrition-insensitive, but potentially harmful to nutrition. So agricultural and trade policies um, since the 1980s were uh, all about liberalization, about removing trade barriers, and uh, move towards greater efficiency, move towards greater economic growth in the longer run, uh, but great potential for negative consequences. So all during the 1980s, there was great controversy over uh, liberalization that continued in the 1990s, um, particularly regarding uh, potential competition imports and so forth that could uh, lead to very significant negative external, uh, negative uh, consequences for, for health. Um, both over and under nutrition. Here we'll focus on under nutrition. So uh, this, of course, is addressed in economics through the economic conceptual frameworks of supply and demand and general equilibrium models and so forth. Uh, but what Kafui did in her fellowship uh, as a public health nutritionist um, was to try to bring this economics work into the nutrition public health literature here with a nutrition type uh, causal pathway framework that would go from the government interventions motivated by economic reasons, not nutrition sensitive at all, um, potentially nutritionally harmful, to how they would affect crop food prices um, through farm income, affect under nutrition potentially, and also through the market uh, in, in consumption. So the idea here is to fill a, a research gap um, thinking about these types of interventions that would uh, come from other, sect other, other motivations. The challenge in bringing this into the nutrition public health um, framework is that these aren't interventions that are done in a specific subpopulation, a particular location, at a time period when you could immediately, um, you know, soon thereafter see a consequence. So we'll see, you'll see how Kafui handled the passage of time. And these are national totals uh, because there's no, you know, these are national trade policies implemented uh, for everyone in, in the country. The underlying database happens um, in some sense by coincidence to be something that I devoted quite a lot of uh, my career previous to working on nutrition to, which was precisely these kinds of trade policies. Uh, so I uh, happened to have uh, led and edited the Africa chapter of a worldwide study to estimate nominal rates of assistance, meaning the net effect of trade uh, on the incentives to um, farmers and, uh, and, and, and to c consumer prices. Um, as you can tell, the idea is to uh, add up all the effects of all government policies uh, relative to what a free trade regime would be. And the uh, net number that we'll be working with is the, if it's above zero, that means that uh, farmers and agribusinesses are being assisted at the expense of consumers. And if it's negative, that means that farmers are being taxed and uh, food buyers or the commodity buyers are being helped. Uh, if it's zero, that would be a free trade regime. So the question is, do the interventions that were undertaken by governments uh, during the period of demographic and health surveys, uh, prior to the demographic and health surveys, did they uh, alter the height for age Z scores, the weight for age Z scores, and the weight for height Z scores uh, across all of the low and middle income countries for which data are, are available? Uh, and and uh, Kafui did this very creative, very interesting step uh, whose results you'll see um, in a moment, of asking whether the impacts were different between the agriculturally employed households and the households that had rural residents but not agricultural employment. So she's working with the universe of all DHS data, and uh, as you can tell, something like half a million children uh, across 26 countries uh, from the period of economic reforms in the 1980s, most of the data come from the 1990s and the 2000s as those reforms played out over time. The analysis is a sort of state-of-the-art um, public health nutrition type of regression framework, um, and uh, you can see a fairly straightforward approach to controls and to uh, mixed modeling. 
Uh, I'll skip the descriptive statistics to jump to the graphical representation of what governments were doing during this period of economic liberalization, structural change. The, um, I didn't uh, edit these slides at all. Um, so I'll just use the pointer here to flag. This line of zero would be free trade. So what you see is quite a lot of countries moving from taxing agriculture towards free trade, especially in Africa, um, and, uh, and generally liberalization towards the line of zero as countries move towards freer trade. The net result of her study, uh, so these are end up being linear estimates of the effect of moving from heavy taxation of farmers, as many tropical countries did to tax the export of uh, coffee, cocoa, tea, uh, and other uh, export commodities or ground nuts out of Senegal, and in some cases food products uh, like ground nuts. Um, and as countries liberalize, height for age z-scores are quite substantially higher, but only among the households for whom there is either one or two, either the, the mother, the respondent in DHS surveys, or the mother and the, um, and the father of the child uh, earning in agriculture. Um, and that is both larger in magnitude and more significant. This is true also for weight for age z-score, combining weights and heights, and weight for, uh, weight for height z-scores in terms of um, uh, avoiding wasting and moving into larger body size. So the net result is finding that nutrition insensitive policies, policies that were undertaken not because of nutrition at all, to the extent that they removed the previous taxation of farmers, especially for the households that reported one or two uh, of the household, um, the, the mother or the father or both employed in agriculture, led to significantly higher uh, attained height um, in the DHS surveys as well as less, um, less thin children. There are, of course, a lot of uh, causal inference questions around this association. The governments were doing many other things as they liberalized, including bringing in um, more nutrition-sensitive programs that were directly targeting nutrition. Uh, but this clear association between trade liberalization and better health outcomes is uh, documented for the first time in this, in this work by Kafui. So thanks very much.